questions before we start? So the step number one says choose one of the equations, the easiest. We'll talk about that later, like how you tell which one's the easiest. That'll be clear later on. And isolate it for one of the variables. What does that mean? Somebody remind me what that means to isolate. Right? Yeah, you're on the right track. How else would you say that? Corbin, what were you going to say? That's an interesting thought, but that's not what isolate means. Isolate. Right, very good. That's a, that's a great way of describing it. So one of the variables is all the way by itself. So is one of those equations isolated already? Which one? Kareem, what do you think? The, f the first one is isolated for y. Okay, so today, this step number one is actually going to be done for us. So we don't have to worry about it. We're going to add that step tomorrow. But it is important to realize that this one is already isolated for y. It says y equals. It doesn't say 2y equals. The other one isn't isolated because the 3x and the 4y are on the same side. And it's 3x, not x, right? So there's all that stuff going on. But this one is isolated for y. Okay, so we're going to get started here. The first thing we have to do, though, is we don't like in mathematics calling things like, well, the first one or the second one or the top one or the bottom one. So what we do is we always give these numbers. So we can say like equation one or equation two, and it's very clear. There's nothing fancy about the numbers. You could call it Eric if you wanted to, like you could, but give it a name. That's, a, that's essentially what we're doing. It's just easier to use a number, right? And part of what we're learning is the form. So every year people are hesitant to do this, but you have to, and it's easy once you get into it. Okay, so part of the form is naming them like this, one and two. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the one that's isolated. So this is isolated for y. And we're going to sub it into the other. This is step two. Substitute your solved equation. So equation one is solved for y. It's isolated for y. Sub it into the other. So I'm going to write my instruction, which is one into two. So believe it or not, this is really important. Like I said, a lot of people are hesitant to do it, but it's really important. Without it, I can tell you honestly from experience, it's really hard to follow what you're doing. Because it's a big, it's a big solution, it's a big process. By the end of it, there's a lot of steps to it. And I won't be able to follow your work if you don't tell me what you've done at each stage. Especially when you make a mistake. And then all of a sudden, it's like impossible for me to figure it out. So the instructions down the left side are, are, are like an integral part of it. You have to do them. Right? So try to get used to that. It's part of what we're learning to do. So what does it mean to sub 1 into 2? Well, just think about this for a second. Remember when we talked about solving equations, we talked about like a balance scale, right? So if I have one 10-pound weight and I take it off and I put two 5-pound weights, what have I done? I've taken two things that are equal and I replaced one with the other, right? I took 10 pounds off, but I put 10 pounds back on. It looks different, but it's the same. Two five pound weights is the same as one 10 pound weight. They weigh the same. Does that make sense? And that, in mathematics, that's like if two things are equal, you can always replace one with the other. Does that make sense? So watch what that looks like when we do it here. Three, whoa. 3x plus 4y equals negative 4. So again, we've solved for y, so we're going to replace y. So I've taken y out. I'm subbing into equation 2, so I've rewritten e equation 2. But I've taken y out and put brackets. And inside those brackets, what am I going to put? Yeah, which is y. y equals that. So I've replaced y with that expression. So this is the new thing that we're doing today. 
This is something you've never really seen before. But now I have an equation that only has one variable. So step three, so there's step two, done. That's not hard. Once you've done that a few times, you can do that every time. You put brackets and you put your expression inside the brackets, right? That's not hard. You can learn to do that. Equation two, or sorry, that's step two done. Step three, solve the new equation for the variable. Now I have an equation that only has x. So I'm going to find out the value of x. You've, you would have done this last year. You haven't done it this year. What do I do as a first step? What do I do with this part? Right? Yeah, so we're going to, this is called distributive property, right? You've seen this before. So we're going to do 4 times 2x and 4 times negative 1. That should be something that's familiar. 4 times 2x, whoops, is 8x and 4 times negative 1 is minus 4. A lot of people would forget to multiply by both and they'd get like 8x minus 1. But don't forget that you have to do both. And then this is very familiar. We did a lot of this early in the year. So I'm going to take the uh, negative 4 and I'm going to add 4. Okay, so that it's gone. And whatever I do to one side, I do the same to the other. So this is 3x plus 8x equals negative 4 plus 4. 3x plus 8x is 11x. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Divide by 11, divide by 11. X equals 0. What have we done? We're not, we're not done the whole equation, so what, have, what did we find so far? This is part of why people struggle with this, because they don't understand what it is they're doing. Evie, what do you think? We found X. Good, and what is X, Kareem? Yeah, but in general, like, what is, like, Joe, what were you going to say? We found X. Yeah, found X. X of what? Yeah, good. And remember, like, what is it ultimately that we're trying to find? Yeah, so we found x. What are we trying to find? No. Not the y-intercept, but point of intersection. That's right. And we found the x part of that point. So what's left? The y. Does that make sense? I hope so. I'm, I'm, we're going to look at it again after we're done all the way. But that, this is something you want to think about. Okay? This process will be hard to learn. If you don't try to learn it, if you don't think about what you're doing while you're doing it, like what did I find? If you try to just kind of do it without understanding, it will be very hard. But if you can, if you can kind of make sense of it, all of a sudden it becomes a lot easier. Okay, so we're going to call this equation three because, again, it just makes it easier to show what we're doing. And at this stage, you can set, we're, we're done uh, step three, by the way. So we found x, the value of x. We're going to sub this into either, again, look back at those steps. If you forget what to do, then your sort of problem-solving strategy would be look at the steps that you wrote down. What steps have I done? What step is next? How do I do that? Break it down into steps. Right? You won't just kind of magically figure out what to do next if you don't think about the steps involved. So sub this, va this value into either of the original equations. And we found x, so we're going to solve for y. The, in this case, the first one is easier. As you do more of these, it'll be obvious, I think. It'll start to become very obvious which one's easier. So 3 into 1. Equation 1 is y equals 2, but I'm, I'm subbing in for x. So if x is 0, I put 0 in place of x. Can I just show you a common mistake that some people make? When, yeah, well, hold on, hold on. We're going to do that in a second. Some people do this, y equals 2x, and then put the brackets and put 0 in. But we, when you sub, you replace x. So if I'm substituting 4x and x is still there, that doesn't make any sense. Keep that in mind. It's a common mistake that I see a lot of people making. Okay, so now 
y equals 2 times 0 is 0, so 0 minus 1, y equals negative 1. So x was 0, y was negative 1. I'm going to do a check. You don't always have to check, but sometimes you're asked to check. Okay, so it's something we're going to think about. So I'm just going to quickly show you what the check would look like. Again, we've already done it. But there's, there's a trick to this. So we're, we're checking our answer. But here's the trick. In this last step, I subbed into 1. Do you see that? Put your pencil down and just watch for a minute. See how I subbed into 1? You have to check in the other equation. If I sub in to 1 and then check in 1, I've done nothing. Okay? So when you do your check, you have to check in the other one. So we're going to check in 2. And equation 2 is left side equals 3x plus 4y. Right side equals negative 4. So this is 3 times x plus 4 times y, which is 0 minus 4, which is negative 4. Left side equals right side. Therefore, the point of intersection is... 0, negative 1. So this would be your final statement at the end. Either at the end of the check, if you're doing a check, or just if you're not doing a check at the end. Any questions? We're going to do a couple more together before you're on your own. Any questions? Okay, let's take a look at this one. Which one of these is solved for a variable? Anna, what do you think? Position. And what variable does it solve for? X. Good. So you're going to notice the work today. It's almost always Y. I think it's always Y. But it doesn't have to be, just, just so we know. It could say X equals. That will work just as well. But for today, I think it's always Y. So what does that mean? It means, again, I don't, and again, these, these are, maybe I should change these examples. It's kind of a bad example. I'm going to do 1 into 2. But you don't always do that. Whichever one is solved for a variable, it's isolated, that's the one you're subbing into the other. So I want you to go ahead and try to do this part. See if you can figure out what to write. So Megan, what am I subbing in for? Very good. So I'm going to do 3x. Right? I'm subbing in for x, so that's where my brackets go. Plus 2y equals 7. Okay. Well, hopefully you got that on your own, but if you didn't, start with that. What comes next? Try it yourself. So if x is y minus 1, that's what goes in the brackets, right? y minus 1. Does that make sense? How many people got that? Hold on. Okay, good. What's the next step? Joe? Nice. So I'm multiplying that by both those things. 3y minus 3. So again, a lot of people would forget to do that second one. They get 3y minus 1. This should be 3y minus 3 plus 2y equals 7. And so notice now I only have y's left. There's no x's left. Like that's a really important 
part of this process. That's supposed to happen. If it doesn't happen, something's gone wrong. Okay, go ahead and finish. What did we find? The value of y. Oh, I forgot to do something in the last example. Right, the value of y. Everybody should know this. What are we trying to find? What do we have left to find? Again, these are the questions you should be thinking about. Michael? The value of x. Very good. Because then you've got x and y. That's your point. And how do we do that? Again, it says it in the steps, but we sub this value into either of the original equations. In this case, again, one is easier. So three into one, because it says x equals, so when I sub in for y, it's really easy to just solve it, right? So x is two minus one, which is one. Therefore, the point of intersection is, if we're not doing a check, then we just write our final statement like that. Any questions? Okay, I want you to put your pencil down and I want you to watch something. So take a look at this example. Here's the first equation. X equals Y minus one. Here's the second equation. Three X plus two Y equals seven. Look where they cross. One, two. That was our solution, right? That's what we're finding. You don't have to graph it every time. You could pull up software like this on your phone to check while you're practicing. Like you could do that. The answers are on the worksheet anyway, but, but you should think about how this is a point because people forget to like think of it as a point. X, Y, it's a point on a graph. It's where two lines cross. Here, let me go back up to this one. We forgot to take a look at this one. So Y equals 2x minus 1, and 3x plus 4y equals 4. Whoops, what did I do wrong? Negative 4. Thank you. And look where they cross. 0, negative 1. That was our solution. That's where they cross. See how this works? OK, I want you to try this one on your own. So don't forget, this is a part of the process that you have to do. Which one is already solved? It, this question does look a little different. Which one is already solved? Sub that into the other. Okay, but what does that look like and how do you do it? Okay, give it a try. Okay, so everybody's at least tried the first step, it looks like. What, which one of these is solved? Ryan? 
and it's solved for y. So it's going to be 1 into 2. So again, it doesn't always, like every one of the, these examples worked out that way, but it doesn't always. Okay. So, and I'm replacing y because it's, it's y equals. So your, your uh, first step should look like that. I think some people might have gotten it backwards. They replaced x, but you should be replacing y. And what goes in for y? That thing that it equals. Okay, so if you got that as your first step, very good job. Okay, now keep going. track with this part. So most people got 3 times negative 3 and 3 times 5 and multiply by both. So negative 9x plus 15. Okay, and this is the part that we've done. So we'll go a little bit faster with this. I'm actually going to move the x over. You, Some people might move the 15 and move the 6x because they like letters on the left, but you don't have to do it that way. So this gives me 0. It's gone. And I'm left with 15 equals 6x plus 9x, which is 15 equals 15x. And then what do I do? Divide by 15, divide by 15. 1 equals x. So that's like step 2 is done, step 3 is done. We're on to step 4. What's step 4? Sadie, what do you think step 4 is? Yeah, so, I, so I'm going to take that value for x, sub it into one of the original two equations, and find y. How about this time we go 3 into 2? You don't have to put it into 1. And it's pretty easy into 2, actually. It might even be almost easier. So 3y equals 6x, but x is 1. So 3y equals 6, divide by 3, divide by 3, y equals 2. Therefore, point of intersection is 1, 2. Don't forget that final statement. It's a big part of this is you know that you're finding where the two lines cross. Don't write this down. Just let me show you. What if I had done 3 into 1, I'd get uh, negative 3 times x plus 5 equals y. So negative 3 plus 5 is y and 2 is y. See, I get the same y value for both. That means it's right. That had better happen because it's the same point for both lines. Any questions? Kind of, yeah. I mean, we also like that you can do a formal left side, right side check. So you, so you probably should if you're asked to check, but you're right. This is basically, this is doing the same thing. In fact, it is the same thing. You would just write left side equals this, right side equals this. And you'd do, the, it'd be the same math anyway, you know what I mean? So it wouldn't really be like long, like more work or less work anyway. 